Howdy. In this video, now that we've introduced um, the setups for water pumping, let's actually put it into practice. So this first one's going to be relatively easy, but this is to learn the three steps that I showed you all. And then after that, then we'll get into some tougher problems. All right, so for number one, it says that I have a rectangular tank that is 10 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 2 feet deep, and is filled with water. Find the work required to pump A, all the water out the top, B, half the water out the top. Okay, so what I like to do is let's sketch out my tank. So you've got a rectangular tank. All right, so you've got this rectangular tank. It's going to be 10 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 2 feet deep. Okay, so here's our rectangular tank. to be perfect, just a general idea of what's going on. It is 10 feet long. It is 3 feet wide. And then 2 feet deep. Okay, and it's filled to the top with water. All right, so it's filled all the way to the top. Find the work required to pump. Okay, okay, I got my picture. Now let's draw my axis. Now notice that the shape facing me is a rectangle. And because the shape facing me is a rectangle, the way I'm going to set up this axis, my y axis is going down the middle, x axis is going along the floor. It is filled to the brim with water, and since it's two feet um, deep, this is going to be at y equals two. Everything I do is going to be revolved around that axis, and that's why it's so important to make sure you set it up correctly. Okay, so now that we have that, step one. Step one, volume. I'm going to find the volume of a slice of water, and volume is equal to area times dy, and that area is the area of the shape from a bird's eye view, and if a bird flew over this tank, it would see a rectangle, and the area of a rectangle is length times width, and dy. Okay, now the subscript of a slice is not for decoration. This is to remind myself that if I took two arbitrary slices out of here, so if I took two arbitrary slices out of this tank, so let's take a look at that one little slice, let's take a look at this other little slice. Depending on the depth, I want to see is my length and my width constant or changing. And taking a look at both of these slices, the lengths are exactly the same, the widths are exactly the same, which since they're constant, make them, well, constants. Your length is always a constant 10. Your width is always a constant 3, no matter which slice I look at. And then, of course, then times dy, and so that is 30 dy. Here's the thing with all of these problems. Step 1 is your hardest point. After you go past step 1, the rest is going to be plug and chug, because watch what's about to happen. In step 2, to find the force on a slice of water, force is equal to rho g times that volume. Now rho g, because I'm in, um, Ameri using American units, the rho g of water, whenever you're an American, is always going to be 62.5. Okay. Whenever it's in metric, it's going to be 9800. But if you're using American units, it's 62.5. So you just take that 62.5 times your v, which we found to be 30 dy. That's it for step two. Finally, step three. Step three, work. The work to pump all those slices of water out will be the integral from A to B of that force that we just found times distance. So this will be the integral of my force is 62.5 times 30 times some unknown distance, which we're about to figure out, dy. And what we need to do here in step three is to figure out my bounds and to figure out my distance. Now for part A, my bounds, it says that I want to pump all the water out of the top. So if I have a full tank and I pump all the water out, that means that the water sitting in between 0 and 2 is what got pumped out. And as for my distance, you look for the highest point that it needs to travel. The highest point that it needs to travel is that y equals 2. And so it's going to be 2 minus and then y. And that would be part A. And as for part B, work will be the integral still of 62.5 times 30 
times some unknown distance. dy, except this time for part b, I want to pump half the water out. So once again, million dollar question, are my limits from 0 to 1, or is it from 1 to 2? Well, I told you to remember to ask yourself, what water? What water is pumped out? Well, if I had a full tank of water, and I pumped half of it out the top, the water sitting in between 1 and 2 is a water that ends up getting pumped out, which is why your limits of integration in this case would be 1 and 2. And as for your distance, it still needs to travel to that highest point, too, minus y. This is how those three steps work, okay? Let's do a couple of other tanks. They're going to be a little bit tougher, but that is the process of water pumping, okay? Let's get a little bit tougher, though, this time. So then I'll keep this uh, nearby so we can remind ourselves of the steps, but let's take a look at a little bit tougher problem. So what I have here is a triangular trough um, has a length of 6 meters, a distance of 2 meters across the top, and a height of 3 meters. Assuming it's full of water, find the work done in pumping the water through a 1 meter spout at the top. Alright, so now we've got a triangular shape, and now we're going to have a spout. Let's, let's see how that's going to work out. So the first thing, let's just kind of sketch, uh, sketch out our tank. So we have this triangular trough, right? Okay, um, it's got a length of 6 meters, across the top is 2 meters, and then it's got a height of 3 meters, then it has a 1 meter spout, so let's put the spout, and let's go 1 meter. <coughs> Alright, so there's my picture, and uh, I think it's going to be full of water. Alright, so this tank is full of water. So let's go ahead and set up my axis. The way I'm going to set up my axis, I look at the shape facing me. The shape facing me is not a circle, which means that I'm putting the y-axis down the middle, and I'm putting the x-axis on the floor. Now, this has a height of 3 meters, but it's got a 1 meter spout. So because this is 1 meter, the top of that spout is going to be at y equals 4. And I am full of water. Okay. So, not the prettiest drawing, but we know what's going on. And that's all that you need with this stuff. Step one, volume. I want to find the volume of a particular slice of water. And volume is equal to area times dy. And area is the area of the shape that a bird would see. And if a bird flew over this tank, it'd see a rectangle, right? If a bird flew over this tank, it wouldn't see the triangle, it'd see the rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is length times width, dy. And as I mentioned in the previous one, the subscript of a slice is not for decoration. It's to remind myself that i got to look at all possible slices of water in this tank. And if I took a look at two arbitrary slices, i got to see is my length and my width constant or vary. And taking a look at these two slices, no matter the depth, my length is always a constant 6 meters. So my length is equal to 6. But your width isn't constant. Your width changes. Your width is varied. It's, so we need to make that as a variable. Now this whole thing would be my width, right? If I take a look at my axis, that is my width. But remember that first drawing I ever drew for y'all back with disc washers? And I talked about a point, and I told y'all that this would come up over and over. And the distance from the y-axis over to your line, this, is dependent on x. Okay, or that distance is x. And so my width is 2x, because, you know, if I drew this correctly, it'd be symmetric. So the point is, is that distance is x. That means this distance here is x. So my width is 2x dy. But then I come across a small issue, and the issue that I have is, well, I've got x's and dy's, and we can't have that. So with triangles, what you're going to do, if you're, the shape facing you is a triangle, what you're going to do every time, every single time is, let's go back to ninth or 10th grade geometry. And let's remind ourselves of similar triangles. Now, what you're going to do, how are you going to deal with this? So I know this big triangle. This big triangle has a width of 
2 and a height of 3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare this big triangle with this little triangle. And these triangles are similar. Okay. Now, this little triangle we saw had a width of 2x and it's going to have a height of y. Now what they taught us, or hopefully your teachers taught y'all back in ninth or 10th grade geometry, is when dealing with similar triangles, the ratio between the width and the height of your little triangle is the exact same ratio as the width and the height of your big triangle. And so from here, I can put that 2x in terms of y. I can say that 2x is 2 over 3y. And so plugging that into there, I get that volume. Finally, volume of that slice of water is going to be 6 times 2 over 3y dy, which 6 times 2 thirds is just, well, 4. So this is 4y dy. And remember what I said, step one is your hardest step, because once you get past step one, man, it's easy sailing after that, because in step two, step two is force. To find the force on that slice of water, that's equal to rho g times the volume that we just found. And because I have water, and because it's in the metric system, the rho g of water is going to be 9,800. So this is 9,800 times that volume of 4y dy. And now that I have that, finally for step three, work. Well, the work to pump out all the slices of water is the integral from A to B of the force that I just found times distance, which will be the integral of 9,800 times 4y times some unknown distance dy. Okay, so for step three, we got to find our interval, and I got to find my distance. Well, for my interval, remember what I said about this. For your interval, I said you need to ask yourself what water. What water is pumped out? And as for D, that's the highest point minus Y. And so, if I have a full tank and I pump out all the water, that means that the water sitting in between Y equals 0 and Y equals 3 is what got pumped out. Now notice how I haven't even taken the spout into account yet. And that's because the only place the spout is taken into account is here in my distance. That's it. Don't let spouts mess you up. I've completely ignored the spout until now, the very last step, okay? So spouts, don't freak out because it just deals with your distance. And the distance that the water would need to travel, it would need to travel to the highest point. And at that highest point, it would have to travel to y equals 4. So since your highest point is 4, your distance is going to be 4 minus y. That's how you're going to deal with this one. Okay? So now that you've seen a couple of examples, let's do one more. That way we really make sure that we understand how to do these water pumping problems. Okay. Last example. Last example that I have here is a spherical tank. So what I have is a spherical tank with a 4 meter radius is half full. Find the work done in pumping the water through a spout at the top with a length of 3 meters. Okay, so let's draw a sphere. Wow, that's an ugly circle, but that's okay. So we're going to draw this sphere. There's my sphere. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put a spout at the very top. It told me that I had a spout at the top. Okay, uh, the spherical tank has a radius here of 4. Okay, it is half full of water be just half full of water, and then this spout is three meters. Okay. So there's my tank, and I see that the shape facing me this time, the shape facing me this time is a circle. And so because of that, uh, I need practice drawing circles, but that's okay. X-axis and Y-axis right down the middle. We know this right here would be four, we know this right here would be four, but because of this spout at here, that would be at 7. Okay, and I am half full of water. So you don't got to be Picasso whenever drawing these or sketching these out. Just get a general idea 
of what's going on and go through our three steps. Step one, step one, volume. To find the volume of a slice of water, volume was equal to area times dy, and that's the area of the shape that a bird would see flying over this tank. And if a bird flew over this tank, it would see a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now, once again, subscript of a slice, not for decoration. I'm looking at different slices, so if I pulled one slice out here and one slice at a different depth, I want to see is my radius constant or is it changing? And depending on the depth, your r is varied. It is not the same at different depths. Your r is x. The distance from the y-axis to your function is x. This would be my radius. Your r is equal to x. So this is pi times x squared dy. Now, whenever you have a circle facing you, the reason, the reason that I put the axis as is, is because whenever the center is at the origin, the general equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared is your radius squared, okay? And so if I want to find the relationship between x and y, here it is. And my radius, the radius of this circle is 4. So this is x squared plus y squared is 4 squared, which is 16. So if I want to put x squared in terms of y, that's 16 minus y squared. And so the volume of this particular slice of water would be pi times... 16 minus y squared dy. And that was the hardest step because after that, step two and three, plugging and jugging. So let's go at let's go at it. So for step two, force, the force on that slice of water is equal to rho g times the volume. And because this is water, because I'm a metric, your rho g is 9800. So it's gonna be 9800 times the volume, volume we just found to be pi times 16 minus y squared dy. Cool, I love step two, that's my favorite one. Uh, finally, step three. Step three, work. Work to pump out all the slices of water is gonna be the integral from A to B of the force that we just found times distance, which will be the integral of this 9800 pi times 16 minus y squared times some unknown distance dy. And let's remind ourselves for the last time. If I want the interval from A to B, you ask yourself what water? What water was pumped out? Well, if I have half, if my tank is half full, and I pump all of it out, remember, this is everything is dependent on my axis. The water that's sitting in between negative four and zero, that's the water that got pumped out. Negative four to zero. And as for your distance, your distance is the highest point on your axis. Everything's revolved around the axis. The highest point on my axis is seven. Minus y. And that, my friends, <laughs> is how you deal with all types of water pumping problems.